Islam's teachings and how they solve past and current problems part 4. Islam calls for kindness and compassion towards all of creation animals, birds, trees, plants. Islam calls for kindness and compassion towards all of the creation of Allah, exalted, from animals, birds and plants. It warns against annoying and mistreating them, and some examples of that regarding animals are. 1. The Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. A man once saw a dog eating mud due to thirst, so he took his shoe and filled it with water and gave it to the dog to drink. Allah thanked him for that and admitted him to paradise, narrated by al-Bukhari. 2. The Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was asked, O Messenger of Allah, is there reward in our kind treatment of beasts? He replied, There is reward in every breathing animal, narrated by al-Bukhari. 3. The Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, forbade riding on riding animals without need so as not to harm them. He said, Ride them in good health and leave them in good health, and do not use them as chairs during your conversations on the roads and in the marketplaces. For it could be that the riding animal remembers Allah, blessed, and exalted, more than its passenger, narrated by Allah Muhammad. 4. The Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Fear Allah regarding these unspeaking animals. Ride them while it is befitting and cat from them when it is befitting, narrated by Abu Dawud. Meaning give them their rights of continuously watering and feeding them, and do not burden them, and thus they will remain in good condition, capable of bearing their load without difficulty. And they will be plump when it comes time to eat from them. 5. The Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, cautioned against harming animals, and clarified that harming them brings about the anger and punishment of Allah, exalted. As he said, a woman entered hellfire because of a cat that she tied up, she neither fed it or allowed it to cat from the grass of the earth, narrated by al-Bukhari. 1. Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, passed by a donkey whose face had been branded, i.e. in order to be identified, and he said, may Allah's curse be upon the one who branded it, narrated by Ibn Hibban. 2. Regarding birds, the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, cautioned against harming birds and killing them without a need such as for food. And he made it clear that this warning includes all birds as well as small birds. He said, whoever kills a small bird for amusement, it will cry out to Allah, mighty, and exalted, on the day of resurrection, saying, Son so killed me for amusement, and he did not kill me for any use. Narrated by an Nasari. 3. Regarding trees and plants, Allah, exalted, says, And do not do mischief on the earth, after it has been set in order, and invoke him with fear and hope, surely, Allah's mercy is, ever, near unto the good doers. Shura Chalaraf, 56. And the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, admonished, saying, And do not cut down palm trees or fruit-bearing trees, and do not destroy buildings, the sealed nectar. An exception to this is in times of necessity when one is compelled to do so, or when there is a general benefit to be derived from doing so that is commensurate with it. Islam and its call to knowledge. Islam calls for knowledge and learning, and for the advancement of the human race in every aspect of life. The first command that the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, received from his Lord, was the statement of Allah, exalted. Read in the name of your Lord who created, Shurat Shalalak, 1. It was a command to be implemented and lived by, by him as well as his followers after him. And, as is well known, reading is the means to gain knowledge in every field. Not only that, but Islam encourages increasing one's knowledge as well, as Allah, exalted, says, and say, My Lord, increase me in knowledge, Surat Ta, 114. The noble Ran and Prophet Hadiths conveyed amazing scientific facts, about the heavens, earth, mountains, seas, humans, animals, birds and plants, over 1,400 years ago. At a time when no one had even the slightest knowledge of such facts, facts the truth and accuracy of which modern science and advanced technology have only recently discovered and confirmed. Some examples of these scientific facts are, 1. Allah, exalted, says, and, remember, when your Lord brought forth from the children of Adam, from their loins, their seed, or from Adam's loin his offspring, and made them testify as to themselves, Shura Chalatif. 172. And Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah took the oath from Adam's back, peace be upon him, and took every one of his offspring from his loins, narrated by an the noble Quranic verse as well as the Prophet Hadiths clarify that all the offspring of Adam, the father of all humans, as he was the first human that Allah, exalted, created, were present in his loins at the time of his creation, and modern science has discovered something called chromosomes. In addition to the embryological discovery of the hereditary role of the chromosome. Moreover, it has been confirmed for embryologists that human creation is predetermined clearly defined, beforehand in the fertile fluids of both the father and mother. And that this predetermination stretches across ancient times connecting the genetic codes from the father to his ancestors until it reaches Adam, peace be upon him, the father of the human race. These genetic codes are programmed in minute, extraordinary and introverted detail inside the living reproductive cell's nucleus, which means 
Each one of Adam's offspring existed in the genetic code of the father of humans, Adam, at the time of his creation. This clarifies the conformity of what the noble Aaronic verse and prophetic hadiths allude to, both of which dealt with the discussion of the previous point. In addition to the discoveries that modern science has made. To Allah, exalted, says, does man think that he will be left neglected? Was he not a drop of fluid from emitted semen? Suratul Kiyama, 36-37. The meaning of the first verse is, does a person suppose that he will be left carelessly, without being burdened to fulfill the commands of Allah, exalted, or carelessly left without reckoning or recompense, or be the reward or punishment, for his obedience or disobedience of the commands of Allah, glorified and exalted? The answer is, a person will not be carelessly left without being burdened or commanded to fulfill the commands of Allah, exalted, nor will he be carelessly left without reckoning or recompense either reward or punishment, for his obedience or disobedience of the commands of Allah, glorified, and exalted. Rather, he will be questioned, brought to account, and recompensed for the deeds he sent forth. Therefore, whoever does an atom's weight of good will receives its reward, and whoever does an atom's weight of evil will be brought to account for it. The meaning of drop of fluid is male and female fertile fluids, and the meaning of emitted semen is the fluid from which an embryo is conceived. Dot meaning. A person's creation begins with one single, minuscule, drop of fertile, conception-inducing fluid, which consists of a great many sperms. The noble Quranic verse is in agreement with what modern science has affirmed, as it points out that conception of the embryo occurs from one drop of fertile fluid, the semen, and that the use of drop by Allah, exalted, indicates singularity and not plurality. Therefore, conception does not occur from all of the sperms contained in the semen, as semen consists of millions of sperms, as the term is not expressed in the plural form in the noble Quran. Rather it is expressed in the singular form. Therefore, one single sperm fertilizes one female ovum that is selected for fertilization from the thousands of ova present in the ovaries. This clarifies the conformity between what the noble Aaronic verses point out and what modern science has discovered, which in turn illustrates preciseness and elegance of the noble Quran's expressions, as well as its agreement with what modern science has affirmed. 3. Allah, exalted, says, then he made his offspring from Salala, sperm, of worthless water, Sirita Sajda. 8. The meaning of Salala means a tiny extract of the fertile fluids, and this is the drop that the previous verse explained, which we just touched upon in number 2. The meaning of the noble verse is that a person's conception as an embryo begins with a tiny extract of fertile fluids. Indeed, modern science has affirmed that the description of the male sperm that conceives the embryo, and from which humans are conceived, conforms completely to what the noble Quran conveyed and pointed out. Through the use of one word in the statement of Allah, exalted, salala, for the following reasons. A. The word salala is a derivative of the Arabic verb that means to gently slip through hence, calling the sperm salala carries several meanings. It is the small part, sperm, of the fertile fluids, semen. That is small part of the fertile fluids resembles a long fish. That is small part of the fertile fluids slips through gently. Modern science has discovered that drop from which an embryo is conceived is an extremely tiny part of the fertile fluids, semen, that its appearance resembles a long fish. And that this tiny part, sperm, gently slips through in the midst of the crowdedness of many sperms in the tightness of the uterus neck by swimming in fertile fluids, semen, in order to fertilize the egg. All of this conforms to what the noble Quran conveyed and pointed out over 1,400 years ago. As that it alluded to these amazing scientific facts at a time when no one had even the slightest knowledge about such things. Thus, these noble verses are a sparkling beam of light that bear testimony to the truth of the noble Quran and that it is revelation from Allah, blessed, and exalted, and consequently. The truth and accuracy of the message of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. For more information about the amazing scientific facts that the noble Quran and Prophet Hadiths conveyed to over 1,400 years ago. At a time when no one had even the slightest knowledge of such facts, please refer to the following book, in English. Islam and the discoveries of modern science as one of the testimonies and proofs of the prophethood and message of Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Resources in the Arabic language. Versus of Scientific Miracles, Heaven's Earth, Animals, Plants, in the Noble Quran, by Dr. Zaglaol and Najjar. Volumes 1, 2 and 3 of Scientific Miracles in the Prophetic Tradition, by Dr. Zaglaol and Najjar. Encyclopedia of Islam and Modern Science, and Scientific Miracles in the Noble Quran by Dr. Zaglaol and Najjar. Embryology in Light of the Quran and Sunnah, by the Association of Scientific Miracles of the Quran and Sunnah in Mecca. The Miracle of the Quran Regarding What the Womb Conceals, by Professor Karim Nahib al -Agri. Islam and the discoveries of modern science as one of the testimonies and proofs of the prophethood and message of Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. By Professor Muhammad El Sayyid Muhammad. Kilojoules.
Islam and the nation of Reed. Islam came with the command to read and learn, in order to bring mankind out of the wandering darkness of ignorance into the light of knowledge in order to traverse its path, thus advancing humankind in every aspects of life. And, as we pointed out in a previous point, the first noble Quranic verse that Allah, blessed, and exalted, revealed to Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was his statement. Blessed and exalted, read, Suratul. Alak, 1. By it, Islam advanced a nation from being characterized by ignorance, backwardness and illiteracy, to become the nation of Reed, thus becoming a reading, learned nation, from which rays of light and knowledge emanate to the entire world. The pioneer Muslims strove to meticulously read and study the noble verses of the Quran, in essence implementing the first matter revealed in the noble Quran, which was the statement of Allah. Blessed and exalted, read. They took great care to investigate and discover the scientific facts conveyed therein as well as in the prophetic hadiths, and remained devoted to their study which consequently became a cause for their advancement in all the scientific fields, especially astronomy, Islam and other religions. Islam has always been keen to invite people of other religions to the true path that conforms to the nature that mankind was created upon by Allah, exalted, and lofty, which is belief in God the Creator, glorified, and exalted, and belief in the oneness of His divinity and not ascribing anything to Him as a partner. This is the true path that Islam calls to and strives to spread and propagate with wisdom and gentle exhortation, and through intelligent, logical and sensible dialogue. Allah, exalted, says, say, O Muhammad, O people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, come to a word that is just between us and you, that we worship none but Allah, and that we associate no partners with him, Surat al Imran, 64, Allah, exalted, also says, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair preaching, and argue with them in a way that is better. Surat an nail 125. Islam also makes it clear that there is no compulsion on anyone to enter Islam, as Allah, exalted, says, there is no compulsion in the religion. Suratul Bayakar are colon 256. Allah, exalted, also says, To you be your religion, and to me my religion. Suratul Kotharun, 6. Islam and friendly interactions with non Muslims. Islam is a religion of magnanimity, thus, it strongly encourages kind and friendly interaction with non Muslims, who do not fight against the Muslims. As the foundation of interaction in Islam is kindness and fairness with all people, Muslim or non Muslim. Allah, exalted, says, Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of religion and did not drive you out of your homes. Verily, Allah loves those who deal with equity. Suratul Mumtahana, 8. Brotherhood in Islam. Islam calls for unity, solidarity, camaraderie, affection and compassion. Allah, exalted, says, and hold fast, all of you together, to the rope of Allah and be not divided among yourselves, and remember Allah's favor on you. For you were enemies one to another but he joined your hearts together, so that, by his grace, you became brethren. Surat al Imran, 103. And the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, The Muslim is the brother of a Muslim, Sahih al-Bukhari, he also said, The parable of the believers in their affection, mercy, and compassion for each other is that of a body. When any limb aches, the whole body reacts with sleeplessness and fever, i.e., all the body parts share in the pain, Sahih al-Bukhari. Before the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was sent as a messenger, the Arabs were murderous, fighting tribes with conflicts and was always arising amongst them for the smallest and most insignificant reasons. However, after the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Came with his message of Islamic monotheism, belief in God the Creator and the oneness of his divinity, and obeying and worshipping him, and people began entering Islam in large numbers. They became loving, compassionate and affectionate brothers, to the point that a Muslim would prefer for his Muslim brother to have before himself. Through Islam, Muslims from every corner of the earth became brothers with one another, in spite of their different colors, nationalities, languages and classes. And, by the will of Allah, exalted, we will shed light upon two worship rituals, prayer and pilgrimage, as well as other worship rituals in Islam clarifying their effects as well as their superior nature in removing the differences and breaking barriers between all races of humans in spite of their different colors, languages and classes. Islam and its magnanimity during times of war The Muslims' wars against their enemies were either to stop their enemies' aggression, defend their religion of Islam and ensure the free spread of Islam's message. 
or against those who defamed the image of Islam, distorted its truth and stood in the way of calling to it and conveying its message and teaching it to people. Still, Islam forbade Muslims from engaging in treachery and betrayal during wars, as well as killing children, women and the elderly, non-combatants. It also forbade killing those who surrender or are weaponless non-combatants, it furthermore forbade demolishing homes, cutting down shrubberies, destroying cities, and any other forms of corruption and destruction in the Kaf. Islam is founded upon compassion and magnanimity, thus we witness fair and humane treatment in times of war. An example of this is when the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Pardoned the inhabitants of Makkah who had previously turned him and the Muslims out of their homes and livelihoods, fought with them for more than 20 years, made several attempts on his life, and hated the message of Islam. This was after the opening of Makkah when he entered the city, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, victorious but still humble before Allah, glorified, and exalted, neither ruthless or vengeful. Rather, he replaced all of that with pardoning and beautiful reconciliation, saying, What do you suppose I will do with you? They said, Goodness, as you are a generous brother and the son of a generous brother. He said, I say as my brother Yusuf once said, No reproach on you this day, may Allah forgive you, and he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Surah Yusuf, 92, Go on, for you are all free, narrated by al bihaqi And on the day of the opening of Makkah, after the Muslims entered victorious without fighting, when the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, heard that someone was saying, Today is a day of massacre, i.e., a slaughter wherein the Muslims will take vengeance against their enemies who fought against them for more than 20 years. and turned them out from the homes and livelihoods, he denied this saying and declared the one who uttered it to be in error. He replied by saying, Today is a day of compassion, meaning, this is the day wherein we will pardon and forgive those who fought against us. Allah, exalted, spoke the truth when he said concerning the Prophet Muhammad, May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, and we sent you not except as a mercy to creation, Surat Yul 107. And, as we indicated in the previous point, Islam does not compel non-Muslims to accept Islam. Rather, it merely invites them to accept it and implement its teachings, leaving the choice to them in this world, as ultimately their account is with Allah, exalted, on the day of resurrection. Islam and good treatment of war captives. Islam is a religion of mercy and fairness, hence, it forbids harming and torturing war captives, and encourages their good treatment. It also sought to make some use of the detaining captives, in that the leader of the Muslims may at that time exchange their captives for Muslim captives, or he may set them free for nothing in return, in the case that there are no Muslim captives at the time, out of kindness and grace, or some other action that will bring about greater benefit. An example of this is found in the collection of Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, had pardoned Thamama bin Athal after setting him free, saying to him, What do you think, O Thamama? i.e., what would you like to say? Thamama replied, O Muhammad, I have a good opinion of you. If you kill me then you will have killed one who has spilled blood i.e., you have a right to do so as I deserve to be killed, and if you are gracious with me then I will be grateful, i.e., if you pardon me I will never forget this favor of yours towards me, and if you desire money then ask and you will be given whatever you wish. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, left him for two days, then came to him and asked, What do you think, O Thamama? He replied, As I have already told you, If you are gracious with me then I will be grateful, and if you kill me then you will have killed one who has spilled blood, and if you desire money then ask you will be given whatever you wish. Thereupon the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, 
set Thumama free, i.e., let him go for nothing in exchange, whereupon Thumama set off until he came to a palm tree near the masjid. He took a bath and then entered the masjid and said, I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This example is an example of the kindness of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, towards one of his war captives, which clarifies that Islam is a religion of mercy and compassion.